Hey folks, Dave here, and welcome back to the American Republic. The year is actually 1807 now, in the summer. Due to a recording issue, I did lose one complete turn, but it was a short one. So here is what you guys missed. We are moving our army that just took Cuba to the east to finish off the remaining Spanish garrison over here that's attacking our commercial ports. We have some minor construction in the continental US, some roads, some farms, some uh, plantations, stuff like that. A bit more ship recruitment. We had a few new fourth rates last turn and this turn. The USS Hero, a second rate ship of the line, is all set to go with 84 guns and almost 300 men. She's going to sail south and join our primary Caribbean fleet down here. Also in the south, we have had more recruitment in our new colonies, and we took New Granada, only to find there's actually a decent sized Spanish garrison guarding it, and they are coming for us full speed. That's a lot of militia and line infantry, and a lot of elite units and cannons right there. So. Wow. Come on, hero. Let's go. There we go. First order of business, I'm going to not spend any gold yet. I'm actually going to pull our occupying army here and retreat from these two pretty powerful armies. We're going to play this safe. So, I also had some construction going, some new steam pumped gold mines. We're going to cancel that. And this army did take, I think, about 120 losses or so, taking the colony. Very small losses, but they are replenishing. Let's pull them back. Forward. Forward. Waiting for your order. I also want to top them off with some of these new units right here. Let's get rid of, let's see, this unit of Minutemen, place them with line infantry. This unit of militia, nah, we'll do the second unit of Minutemen. Add a mortar battery. And finally, we'll do... Provincial Cavalry, you're going to fall back with the Minutemen, and we'll add a Puckle Gun. So now we have a primarily infantry-based army with a lot of artillery, so we're now a more defensive force. Any further orders? Yes. Forward! For Crown and Country! Sir. Hey. Your orders? And they might retake Granada, but I'm not too worried about it. We can just take it right back. This new army is coming to assist. And that should work out quite well, I think. Get these guys coming to assist. That Spanish fleet that I was hoping to ambush over here took off into the Atlantic somewhere. I'm not sure where they're going. So in the meantime, let's use our fleet to scout things out here. That global trading company is already burned down. Oh, it actually belongs to us, though. It's part of this colony. Oh, well. We have an undefended, low-quality trading port, but we're going to burn it anyway. That'll cost them some repair money. And here are some more stragglers, possibly coming south to assist the loss of their colony. But if that's all they've got, they really are in trouble. Okay. This is a pretty powerful fleet. They'll be safe out here for this turn. We're 
almost in range to take on these guys. Let's see if we can. Where is their general? There's their general right there. Can we make it? Aha! We are going to have to watch for reinforcements to come in on our flank because of this army over here at the port. But let's go ahead and take out this Spanish garrison on Cuba. This is my first uh, in-game battle here with my second GTX 680 in SLI. And uh, this game, especially with Darth Mod installed, is pretty demanding. But it looks like the SLI profile is really efficient. Right now, with all of these troops being rendered, I'm maintaining looks like 60% uh, usage on GPU 1 and 80% on the second. That's that's a lot of <laughs> a lot of graphics power for a game like this. But I'm maintaining a frame rate above 30 at all times, and at times hitting 60. So hey, that works for me. I do love my pretty graphics. I'm going to put our 12-pounder cannon right here. Hopefully he can fire over that hill. Second thought. Let's get him right here. Yeah, a bit better range there. Actually, even better right here. We'll put our 3-pounders in the tree line right there. Howitzers in the back. With explosive shells. Militia, line infantry, and rangers right there. Let's make sure they don't get hit by our own cannons. And that they don't shoot our own cannons. Alright. And some line infantry there. Militia and line infantry. More militia. Minutemen. Line infantry. Line infantry. A pretty mixed force. So we'll keep them pretty packed in right there. It's a nice balance. You have line infantry followed by line infantry followed by minutemen followed by militia followed by line infantry. They can kind of cover the weaker units that way. One line infantry here on the left flank. One more. We'll put him in square formation. In case of a cavalry charge here on the right. Man, this game still looks good. Even almost five years later. For our cavalry. Hmm. Provincial, Regiment, and Provincial. Regiment and Provincial here on the right. Second Provincial on the left. Pretty straightforward formation. My lines are thin, but I have a decent amount of artillery. I think we'll be fine. Get those cannons focusing on all of these horse. Lots of cannon shots skipping right there. Seven dragoons down. All of the howitzer shots did fall short. Put you in square formation. Get you over here. Fall back from this charge. Our square formation will help cover our cavalry up, and there's the flank.
Alright, we're gonna have to shift lines here quickly. Forgot all about those guys. have a lot of cavalry. Wow. Totally forgot about the flank. Oh, cannons. Let's not do that. Let's get these lines reorganized. There's been a chorus of cavalry fall back. Line infantry fall back. What we're gonna do here is shift our lines completely around. and meet the new advance on the right flank. We are going to hold here and make the Spanish come at us. Everyone hold fire. And everyone open fire. They have undefended artillery. Regiment of horse, go for it. Provincial cavalry. Get up here and flank these colonial line infantry. Let's fall back just a bit. I'm also using these walls as natural defenses. Maybe not natural, but convenient, I guess. Surprise, cavalry attack is working okay there, but let's pull them back and get them to advance some. And their cannon is now gone as well.
There's some withering crossfire finally. Ooh, a howitzer shell dropped right there in the front of the Spanish ranks. That broke their morale. That was a great shot. And now we have our cavalry charge in there. And let's swing this line back around now that we have taken care of that flank. Ooh, great artillery hits there. And here comes the Spanish advance. Alright, cavalry, pull back. All troops get into position. Get ready to fight. Cannonballs just skipping through their ranks. That's what I like to see. Switch to canister shots. There's the canister shot. As bombs burst over the Spanish ranks. Their general's bodyguard has charged in. That's going to end poorly for them. It's like a firing line. Somehow their general is still alive and all of that. Oh man, cannon hits and everything on that left side. It's about three horses lost right there. Only 10 horses left in the general's bodyguard, and somehow, the general is still alive. The troops behind the wall are just waiting for their moment. Once the Spanish crest the hill, that should do it. And they pop up and fire off a volley. I 
I totally forgot about my cavalry on the left flank. You guys go after their cannon, which is back here. I don't think they've hit anything yet. Another very close direct hit with the howitzer and the explosive shells. That causes just a really devastating morale drop in the Spanish lines. They managed to hit our lines very lightly with that cannon. That's about to end as well. Let's get our horses up here to run down the remainder of their army. And we have reached their cannons with a nice flank. And their cannons are broken. There goes their militia. Run them down. With their lines broken, pretty much all except for these two regiments right here in the center, my cavalry can just go wild in the back of their lines. See, there's almost no lines left. <laughs> These guys are getting the brunt of all of my artillery right now. It's gotta be pretty concerning to see yourself surrounded like this. Oh wow, a cannonball right down the ranks. Let's let our general get a piece of this. Artillery, hold fire. And we'll fast forward just a bit. Where is their escape route? Oh, they have a long ways to run to get to the edge of the battlefield. I'm going to call this a definite success despite the total failure on my part to plan for those reinforcements from our flank. We managed to spin around pretty quickly and meet them just in time.
We deployed 3,327, they deployed 2,400. We lost about 626 to their almost 2,000. I cannot do that. And they actually had some armies survive that, wow. Let's replenish. I'm not going to bother repairing or building anything on this side of Cuba yet. They could just destroy it. We'll upgrade the farms. Uh, tobacco warehouse. The barracks. And that will probably do it for Cuba. Infrastructure is being built. Spain just had dirt roads in Cuba. Here in the continental US, I want to have one more frontier army. We have our kind of garrison force here in Pennsylvania. We have a large army in the Iroquois territory to kind of watch our northern borders, but down here in the south and the west, we just have this one army out here. I'd like to change that. Recruitment options from Savannah, Georgia. Two cannons. Let's not do that. Let's do a cannon and line infantry. Provincial cavalry. Provincial cavalry. Minutemen. Let's just do two Minutemen. And the artillery, actually, if we do that there, we can let George's recruitment focus on good line infantry. We'll re-recruit the first Delaware, which we lost, I believe, in South America, along with the Pennsylvania Rifles. And we'll add them to that army out there in the west. And a howitzer. What else can we spend this money on? Hmm. Any good upgrades or infrastructure improvements? I'm not seeing much. Let's make sure we have cobbled roads for all of our territories. Looks good to me. You know what? We're going to save that money uh, for next turn. Estimated income of around 18,000. And we'll meet these Spanish forces hoping to retake their colony. We are really, really putting the hurt on the Spanish right now. And that is definitely going to continue. The Dutch have just invaded the Carolinas with a massive army. That's a really, really impressive force. Wow. European mercenaries from India. Heavy cavalry. Grenadiers. Elite sepoys from... The colonies? Wow. Okay, we only have a very small garrison here in the Carolinas. Garrison militia and firelock armed citizenry. But let's make a stand. Here we are in the beautiful Carolinas. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this defense. I just want to make them bleed. We're not going to stand long, unfortunately. 
but we're going to take over a few buildings here and see what happens. That is a very impressive Dutch army. Let's take a look here. Here are the Sepoys. Who are, I believe, African mercenaries. It appears that the Dutch army is also playing Yankee Doodle, possibly to mock us. And their general is up front as well. They have horse guard artillery? Wow. Fancy. You know, I hadn't taken the Dutch out. All they had left was their home country, but... I'm getting really tired of this. They are just swarming in with cavalry. This is not going to last long. I wonder if we can kill their general, at least. Ah, the citizenry already broke. And our garrison militia has now also broken. Their general still lives. I think it's time for that army from Pennsylvania to march south. We only managed to kill 10 of them. A pitiful defense of the Carolinas. And the Dutch are engaging us. Our second rate, the Ranger, and the fifth rate, the Adamant, versus a rocket ship, a fifth rate, a fourth rate and a bomb cache. Now we are outnumbered by faster ships, but uh, we're not going to let this invasion go without a, uh, a return volley here. We're going to go for it. And as soon as I get my turn, our naval forces in the Caribbean are coming right up here to our shores and this fleet is done for. It looks like the winds are against us off the coast of Virginia here. So let's kind of swing our fleet off to the side. Put the adamant up front. And that way we'll have just a bit of wind to help our second rate, the ranger here. And she is a beauty. That rocket ship is going to be an issue. We have more powerful ships, but that thing can set all of our sails on fire very easily. Let's look right here on the front. There are those rocket skids. They do have quite the range as well, from what I remember.
going to send my fifth rate, hopefully around the back of their forces, to hit those artillery ships. For now, let's get this second rate turned around. Let's give the Gelderland a nice second-rate broadside, shall we? Wow, we just smashed this fifth rate's hole to pieces. can't seem to unfurl the sails on the ranger. I'm not sure what's going on there. I'm not sure what the deal is with the controls. Don't think I'm being boarded. And there's the rocket ship. Now we have sails again suddenly, okay? And the adamant is on fire and routing. I think we're being boarded here, so let's give them a nice, fat, broadside. Three, two, one. Oh no, the, uh, the adamant is completely on fire now. Thanks to that stupid rocket ship. I think she's going to explode. I think they are attempting to board the Ranger. That's why our controls are so unresponsive. 
have sank one of their fifth rates, at least. And there goes the adamant, as the ranger gets boarded. And explodes, man. Now the ranger is also on fire. Our crew still outnumbers theirs. All of our crew is being engaged, so we can't use our cannons. That rocket ship is definitely a nuisance. And the Gelderland is failing in their attempted boarding of the Ranger. Appears that they're going to disengage, I think. Nope, they're still fighting a bit on the deck. This is a long attempted board. They're hitting their own ship here, and they have surrendered. You know what? Surrender not accepted. We're going to sink her. And the Gelderland is now on fire. Let's give her one more good broadside. Actually, it looks like their rocket ship is taking care of that for us. We are routing. Hopefully we'll come back here. Nope, she is in full retreat. Quite a rank up there, though. That rocket ship has got to go. Well, thanks to their long-range artillery ships, that didn't go great. Thankfully, she survives, and we're now going to be <laughs> engaging them with the Thunderclap up near New York. These guys are really aggressive. Once again, the wind is against us. So we'll go in this way. I think it's time to give these guys a nice fat broadside.
Let's see if we can actually ram her. And they're going to attempt to board again. These guys are nothing if not persistent. Direct rocket hits causing some casualties here. Which one of you idiots is trying to board? I really hate how I'm helpless as the AI lines up slowly for their boarding process. Once again stuck as they try to board. If this wasn't an AI player, I would swear that they're abusing the boarding system to lock my movement. I've lost 11 cannons while I'm trying to spin this stupid thing. It is very difficult to fight with just one large ship against a uh, array of medium-sized ships that can just so easily outmaneuver you. Let me lower my sails. What's left of them at least. Each time I start to turn, the AI perfectly turns away from both of my sides. Almost perfectly. And she's routing. And she falls back. We have a third rate here. Let's try this one more time. Once again, we have awful winds, but we'll do what we can. I'm going to greatly look forward to sinking this obnoxious fleet. Though I don't think it's going to happen here. Thankfully, our smaller third rate is much more maneuverable. I'm going to switch to chain shot and slow that ship down. They shot one of our mass with their cannon. And with one blow, we have severely damaged all of their masts, taking one of them out. Let's go to full sails and break away.
Actually, no, you know what? Let's take on the fourth rate and go for his sales as well. Should not take us long. We're all reloaded. Take out his sails. Shots all the way through them all. Not as much damage as that previous barrage, but not bad. Let's turn quickly here. And here comes the rocket ship. Going to have them hold fire and ignore the fifth rate, which is demasted and dead in the water. Let's focus on that fourth rate. Come on, turn. Turn, 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 turn. going to do next is actually attempt to run and get some distance from these rocket and bomb ships. Use the wind to my advantage. is the USS Diligent. Let's swing her around. Get a good barrage off. On the Gelderland. Let's just swing you all the way around like this. going to be going against the wind here very slowly but they've had the wind in their favor for every single one of these battles not much we can do about that we now have both sides opening up on their fourth rate and their fifth rate. And the Gelderland has surrendered. We're going to hold here. And we're going to sink her. The surrendered Gelderland is sitting off to our side right here. Let's give them a nice broadside.
That was an awful cannon shot. Almost ready for a full broadside again. And their fifth rate is wavering. Have another broadside. That's probably going to sink her. She is listing very badly and she is sinking. No mercy for the invading Dutch. This fleet has landed an entire army in the Carolinas and then just run up the coast wrecking havoc. I am tired of it. And their fifth rate is now sinking as well. If I can, I'm going to capture these artillery ships and use them against the Dutch. Gunord, their rocket ship, is routing. I think I have crippled their sails. They are routing quite slowly. Unfurl all the sails. Give them some round shot. Followed by some chain shot. As we very, very slowly gain on them here. I want that rocket ship. We have killed their admiral. Ooh, with chain shot too, that's painful. He was hiding on board the rocket ship. Thanks to the decent speed of this third rate, we are able to keep pace and just keep hammering them. And they are demasted and surrendered. That only leaves their bomb ship their mortar ship who is quite concerned about their recent losses and the loss of their admiral they are mortaring us of all things at very short range. A decent hit. A second mortar shot. Falling too far. Let's give them a good broadside of chain shot. And they have surrendered with one more mortar shot flying and missing. Heroic victory, our third rate managed to finally stop this harassing, rampaging Dutch fleet. We are going to take both of their artillery ships and add them to our fleet.
thankfully that does keep our trade route safe there in New England. At last, it is the winter of 1807, after a very rough year for the USA. We've lost our garrison forces in the Carolinas, and they left a small force behind. I think it's just uh, riflemen, the first light foot, grenadiers, and general's bodyguard. The main part of their army is marching possibly to our frontier yeah our woodland preacher has gained experience and he actually needs to come up here and help in Virginia where a Spanish priest is converting our population to Catholicism nation destroyed Dagestan we have lost the Carolinas the Spanish have raided a plantation. Let's repair that. They have also raided a seminary, which is Catholic anyway. Let's just go ahead and dismantle that. They have raided our gold mines right here. But we can't fix that until we take out the army. Lots of construction is complete. And plenty of recruitment. To wrap things up for this episode, let's meet this invasion force. This garrison here in Florida and Georgia is not enough, I don't think, to take out the Dutch holding the Carolinas, but we won't have to wait long for now. Let's recruit let's do light artillery and line infantry. Let's move General Virgil and his army back up to the Kaintuck territory as quickly as possible. And our garrison force here with General Wayne is going to come south with great haste. I would say also to the Kaintuck territory. If he needs to swing south out of Virginia next turn, we can change directions then. Our fleet also took quite a beating, and one thing I've learned here is that second rates on their own just can't maneuver against a smaller fleet like that when they're outnumbered. It's just that raw power is not enough. Let's repair this second rate, which is the uh, the Ranger. It looks like he ranked up a couple of times in experience. Also need to repair the Thunderclap, which did not do well at all. She retreated really quickly. Now that we know what is helpful in battle, let's recruit a third rate for each one of those second rates to support them, and perhaps a fifth rate as well. So each one of those second rates guarding our harbors, our trade ports, are going to get their own third rate and their own fifth rate, those more maneuverable ships to help guard our ports. We also need to repair the Diligent, which has definitely earned her name, guarding the coast off of Boston and New England. We're going to repair our new captures, a rocket ship and a bomb ship. That is a good start for beating back this Dutch invasion. I don't like seeing that bit of orange in the middle of my republic. There you have it. 
Let's run down this militia. We are mighty and unbowed. So they stop burning yes, things down here in Cuba. Repair our trade port, and of course this last bit of their army over here. Proud and victorious. Trade gained, plus one morale in battles. We also have a harbor here. Let's build a shipyard. Well, with the Spanish fleet gone, I'm going to split off some of the ships from our Caribbean fleet. We're going to send the Constitution, the Revenge, um, the Freedom, and the RNG. What is that kind of name? The USS Boston. Those four ships are going to break off from the fleet and we're going to raid our stolen Carolina trade port off the coast of the Carolinas right here. All of this definitely hurt our income a bit. but we just kind of have to deal with it. Actually, to prevent this harbor at Yorktown from getting destroyed, I'm going to send the Ranger south to get repaired. That will keep that harbor occupied. I still can't quite figure out why the British aren't taking Lower Louisiana. They have a lot of troops coming south, but no real action yet. We also have the USS Colorado, which I don't believe exists yet. <laughs> um, let's use her to scout out Texas. Texas appears to be pretty run down. There's no real build up, just a, a minor governor's capital from where the Spanish have conquered it and taken it from the natives. Here in the south, however, let's look at this. There's a big fleet. All right. Let's join this fleet. Actually, no, join this fleet in the Caribbean. and raid this Spanish trading port once again. And at last, let's get this army back on the capital of our new colony. And we'll get ready to take out these Spanish forces in the next turn. Keep these guys moving west. More recruitment. And that does it for our cash. It looks like we have quite the interesting fight ahead of us once again. The Netherlands might have to fall. Maybe I could gift it to France in exchange for ending the war that I'm about to start. The Dutch appear to be very, very vindictive. They built up this very powerful, quite advanced army just to come after me here in North America. One final check of our research and technology. Progressing okay there. Any other trade routes possible? Nope, we are full up. The list of nations is getting smaller. But we're also increasing our position within them. That's going to be it for now. 
As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the other stuff I have going on on the channel. And I will see you all next time. Yeah. <laughs>